Today I'm going to talk about the Boolean sequencer. This block is used to manage pumps or chillers or boilers in a sequence based on either runtime or a standard 1, 2, 3, 4 sequence. Uh, this is the block that um, we've written. You can configure up to five stages. Um, the inputs are not reflective of the outputs. The inputs just tell how many stages you want to run. The outputs are based on either runtime or in a lead lag follow situation. The mode will tell you which one is currently leading. The block also offers a sequence change one shot input and some fault inhibit control. The block will also manage its own internal runtime. Now this is based on the output being turned on, so it's more a command rather than a status driven runtime. We had various meetings about whether to utilize a status for the runtime, but ultimately a fault input will stop that runtime anyway. So you could use some kind of um, XOR control or however you wanted to manage that based on a fault. Um, if you didn't want the internal runtime, you can externally link a runtime to these points here, available through this drop down. You can just link to this and it will use an input of runtime read either from the equipment itself or based on how you want to determine runtime. So over here we've configured a block with an enable, a sequence change one shot and up to five inputs and five outputs. This block here is based on a lead lag follow scenario. Currently the block is off as denoted by the mode. So if we enable the block, it will continue. And as we have all five outputs on, sorry, all five inputs on, all five outputs come on. So if we wanted to reduce the number of stages from five to four, even though we have five inputs on, only four of the outputs will come on and it is in line with the number. So if you have a number of stages set at four, five will be disabled each time. We can see that the lead is currently one. If we ran a sequence change from this point, even though everything is on, the lead would change to two. So when we turn input four off, output one will turn off. Five is not on, turn that off as well. So one will be the first one off because it is in effect the last unit to run. So if we turn off input two, output four will turn off because the inputs are requesting a number of stages to be on, not which stage to be on. So if we ran a sequence change now, two would turn off and four will turn on. Two is off, four is on. We still have two units operational. So if we receive a fault on uh, equipment number four, four will turn off and one will turn on. This maintains the number of outputs running based on their availability. So if we now ran a sequence change, four would still be excluded and we've got here, two and three would come on, maybe. So one is now the, the lead, one and two are on, three is off, four is still in inhibit. So if we inhibit the lead unit, Inhibit one, two and three will come on, and one will be in inhibited. So if we clear the fault on input one, input one will restart, and output three will be turned off. 
input one starts, sorry, output one starts, output three is turned off. So because it's a lead lag follow scenario, we hard we request a hard sequence of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four in this case. If there was five, if there was two, it would manage it the same way. If we change this to runtime, The lead is selected as four because four will have the least amount of runtime. So four is currently in fault. So the next one will take the lead, the next, the least amount of run hours, which in this case is two. So two will be leading and then three and then four. So if we release the inhibit for four, no change will occur. Or back to false. Four will not come on until there is a change in sequencing. Four just becomes available in the sequencing. So if we ran a sequence change, which one would turn off? One would turn off and four will turn on. One is off, four is on. So four and two are the other outputs with the least amount of run hours so they will come on so if we turn one off and turn one on again two will turn off and then two would turn back on again if we ran a sequence change now there would be no change of outputs because we're running on runtime so four will remain as the lead unit until it catches up the 620 hours to get to runtime two. And the same two will remain the second unit until it hits over three. And a sequence change will only occur when the input demand changes or it gets a sequence change fire. Otherwise, if there is no change in input and no sequence change, output two and four will run indefinitely. So you could punch in a schedule into the sequence change once a week. That way the system can check. It will also check every time it does a sequence change or a, a demand change. So if we wanted to call in, in two, output three starts. If we turn off input one, output three stops. If we turn on input five, There is no change because five is greater than the number of stages that we have called for. I hope this fits in with what you'd like out of a lead lag control. Um, a lot of work's gone into this, a lot of feedback. This mode here changes obviously um, and the runtime. Hope you appreciate it. Thank you very much.